Hello everyone, uh, today we'll be looking at how to install Spinal Core Toolbox on a Windows 10 Home. So prior to this tutorial, you should already have uh, Git, Xming, and Docker installed. And since we are on a Windows 10 Home, we will be trying to do everything on uh, Docker Toolbox. So prior to this, we will look for um, the Nurpoli ST Docker um, page. So we're going to type um, here as we search it up, um, GitHub Nurpoli. Go. Going to be the very first link. We will then go down and look for SCT Docker. Here we're going to be able to find um, information on how to install it for Windows. So Docker for Windows, as we here see here, and go into installation. So as I mentioned, we should have Git, Xming, and Docker. Um, if you do not have those, you can follow the tutorials that are on the following links. So we're going to start the tutorial at step number four. Um, so we will first open Quick Start Terminal and wait until we get a command prompt. So that can be done on pressing the icon over here that you should get after um, getting Docker Toolbox. I already have it open, as you can see over here. And wait until the command prompt is open. We will now run the command, um, as we see over here, Docker pull, no poly st, um, st for show. And get that in. And as you can see, for me, um, I already have it, so it's already pretty up to date. But for you, you will see that there will be um, many images being installed. So once that is done, you can now proceed to the next step. Um, just a reminder that this tutorial is for Windows 10 Home, and that we'll be using Docker Toolbox and the following steps. You completely use it as Docker Toolbox. So to avoid any memory issues when running ACT, it is important to increment the default amount of RAM, um, around 1 gigabyte, of the Docker virtual machine. So to do this, we will run some commands, the first one being um, docker machine stop default, as you can see right over here. So we're run this, paste into terminal. And then we will then do the next command. There we go. And finally, the final one. And don't worry if this takes a little bit of time, it is normal for the Docker start and stop to take um, some steps to do. Um, with these commands, we have increased the RAM memory of the virtual machine Docker to 2 gigabytes. And it's really important that your PC has at least 3 gigabytes of RAM in order to leave at least 1 gigabyte for your Windows host system. Now, um, once this is going to be over, and there you go. Okay, we'll now proceed to the next step. Um, we're going to go to our users and create the folder named Docker shared folder. So if I open our file explorer, we can see here Windows C, go into users. And then we are going to create a new file, a folder called Docker shared folder. Hit enter, there you go, it's not created. And then if running Docker for Windows, um, we are not going to follow that step since we are using Docker Toolbox. And finally, um, we will leave with the computer, um, but in our case we don't have to do it because we already had it installed earlier. But if this is your first time, uh, please do restart your computer before proceeding with the next steps. Alright, now that we have, um, if you think about it, restart our computer, we will run the next command being, um, so this is for Docker Desktop, we want the one for Docker Toolbox. So we're going to run Docker Run, and this one. Control this, paste it here. And now we have um, finally, if we do ls, which displays all of the containing folders, it shows everything inside. Now, um, usually, as we see here in the steps, Docker shell folder should be highly in green. However, in our case, it is not. However, do not worry, there are steps to um, get it to be highly in green. Now, what we're going to do first is we're going to go check the permissions on our local host file. So we're going to go into our file explorer again. We're going to go into um, our documents. No, sorry, not documents. Uh, Windows C, go into our users, and go here to check the permissions. So when we right click, we go into properties, <coughs> go into security, and then we're going to check for everyone um, to have full control over everything, as we see here. Now we're going to do edit, 
press allow for everyone. Okay, it's gonna automatically apply. Okay, there you go. Now our user has full control over everything. And then we are gonna do that. And let's make more time to display everything in the folder. And we notice that this is not yet green. That is because we have to um, mount our actual folder with the folder that we have created in our container. So to do that, we're gonna follow the preceding steps by doing um, Docker machine stop. Let me see here. But we have to open a new Docker quick start terminal window because Docker commands do not work when the this is active. So we're gonna give it a second. There you go, it's started. And we're gonna do um, Docker machine stop. All right, next we are gonna open a virtual box GUI. So if we go over here, this is Oracle VM Virtual Box. So we're gonna double click this. It's already open. Um, as we see here, we're gonna go in default, we're gonna go into settings. We're gonna go into shared folders. We're gonna add a folder. And then we're gonna write the folder path. Click other. Go into our Windows C. Go into users and then Docker shared folder, select folder. So then we're going to do auto mount. Um, as you can see here, there, if you do have a make permanent box, you may check it. If not, do not worry about it. Just check the auto mount. Press OK. Press OK. And then we'll now proceed to the next step. So now we go back into our quick start terminal that does not have the, um, the SCT container open. And we're going to do doc machine start. Docker machine, sorry, um, start. There you go. Now we're going to SSH into the Docker machine with the command Docker machine SSH. Just copy paste that in there. Now we are going to create a new directory called with mkdir for make directory um, Docker shared folder, which does have the same name as the one um, we created in our user file. Now, at the point, if you want to copy paste commands from here into here, um, you do copy. And once you're here, you do right click. And then press enter. That is created. Um, this will be um, as written here home docker docker shared folder. Now we have to mount the created directory at the shared point that we have just created. So we're going to run this command. Copy that. And for these steps, the commands can get quite long. And if because the terminal window is pretty small, um, it can't actually put on the entire command on one line. So what you want to do is we want to extend this and then enter a command. So there you go, that is done. Um, afterwards, we're going to uh, launch container by running docker run. So we're going to do docker run. Steps, control, and once again, right click. There you go, and now we have entered. And now when we do ls, there you go. Now it is highlighted in green. And then uh, we can skip these tests because now it's highlighting green. And now we're going to connect it to the xmain SSH if exporting is needed, running FSLIs from there. So now we're going to do a git clone. All right, so we're now going to proceed with uh, the git cloning of the following repository. And we're going to do it in a new window. As you see here, this is a new window. We do ls. I see um, the different things that were included where we created our Docker shared folder. So what we're going to do is we're going to enter into the Docker shared folder there and we're now going to run uh, our git clone command. We're going to use git clone, put in here and we're now copying the repository. Now what we want to do is go into this folder and then run the command as we see here if we're on docker toolbox windows forward slash st win docker toolbox x launch. So we're going to just do start this command. This is asking for a password. Opens xming. And here it is opening a graphic terminal um, emulator for LX uh, using LX terminal and allows for copying and pasting commands a lot more easily. So to check it out if it works properly, we can write FSLIs. And if you see, there you go, it's open. So 
just make sure that fslize works by writing fslize into um, the LX terminal. And then finally, um, after closing a program, if you want to tr uh, close fslize, you can go into LX terminal and do control C at any time. And then to check that all your dependencies are properly working in Spinal Core Toolbox, you can go over here where we had our container and write SCT check dependencies. Dependencies, there you go. And as you see, it's going to start a check to check that everything is okay. So, there you go. Thank you for watching the tutorial and have a nice day.